the Vought V-173. It was the Flying Pancake, a strange yet promising experimental test aircraft built for the American Navy fighter program during World War II. The wooden V-173 and its all-metal successor, the XF-5U Flying Flapjack, weighing in at five times the weight, were designed as an all-wing disc that could, in theory, provide a significant advantage in lift. Powering the airplane were propellers at the edge of the wingtips, using two piston engines concealed within the body. The unique design was observed by thousands of Americans during testing in 1943, leading to widespread rumors of a UFO invasion. Project Goals World War II marked a key period of military inventiveness, particularly for aircraft development. Advances were made with rocket and turbojet propulsion technology. New flying wings, fighter types, reconnaissance planes, and multi-engine bombers were created. Efforts in the United States and abroad gave the world vehicular success after success, some of which permeated into commercial aviation. In the early 40s, the American Navy desperately searched for the ideal multi-purpose fighter. The conflict in the Pacific was of utmost importance to the United States. Ensuring naval and air superiority was vital in defeating the Japanese Imperial Army. The Navy sought a plane that could deploy from tankers, cruisers, and other vessels, battling both Japanese kamikaze aircraft and submarines. To accomplish such lofty development goals, the aircraft would need to be able to take off and land almost vertically. Charles H. Zimmerman Charles H. Zimmerman had been hoping to demonstrate his aircraft concept for the V-173 since 1933. The Navy's interest allowed him to turn the dream into reality. His original design led him to an almost circular platform for the aircraft. He wanted large propellers and powerful engines. The second aspect never truly materialized. The main goal was to have a plane that could hover at low speeds, or hover while stationary. In addition, he ambitiously wanted to surpass the high speeds of conventional aircraft, but this too was a feat that was never truly realized. Zimmerman was generally known in the aviation industry for his experimental designs. He had worked mostly for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, as well as its predecessor. The need for carrier-friendly fighters seemed like a match made in heaven for his design. He joined the aerospace company Vought in 1937 after being invited by the company's then-president, Eugene Wilson. He got the Navy interested in his concept by conducting a demonstration with a radio-controlled small-scale version. The contract was issued for him to work on his full-scale model in wood and fabric for experimental testing. Development The Chance Vought Division of United Aircraft had given the American Navy and Marine Corps plenty of interesting planes, but perhaps none so experimental and novel as the Flying Pancake. Among their previous developments, they had created the F-4U Corsair, one of the best carrier-ready fighter aircraft flown during the Second World War. The program began in 1939, with Charles Zimmerman leading the team as senior designer. He was convinced that keeping uniform airflow over the entire wingspan, including the fuselage, would provide easy and low-speed takeoffs and landings while granting high-speed capabilities. The Navy was elated at the prospect. The aircraft was designed and built as a flat, disc-like body often compared to a pancake, giving the aircraft its informal name. Two piston engines were hidden in the body to the sides of the cockpit, with the powered propellers at the leading edge. The strange configuration promised speed variation and high angle altitudes during takeoff and landing. The wing included a complicated empennage made by two horizontal stabilizers and elevators, plus two rudders and two large midcraft elevators. Some would compare the overall look of Zimmerman's design to a sea monster or an alien craft. It has been speculated that Zimmerman may have borrowed some inspiration from manta rays, but this has gone on unconfirmed. One of the most successful aspects of the unique design was that the whole body generated lift. The associate director of research at NASA's Dryden Flight Research Center stated the following, quote, In this case, the V-173 really is a flying wing. By having the propellers so very large and spinning at not inconsiderable velocities as well, you wind up with very large gyroscopic forces. So it starts to actually behave a bit more like a helicopter, or in a modern sort of parlance, a V-22 Osprey. V-22 guys would totally relate to the way this particular aircraft operates. Vought built a small, quarter of the intended size aircraft, designated the V-173, or Flying Pancake. This prototype was made of wood and canvas and had a symmetrical aerofoil section. It had a weight of 3,050 pounds, which was one-fifth of the intended weight for the full-size plane. 
This lightweight test model was given 280 horsepower Continental A80 engines to power its propellers, taken from the F4U Corsair. Eventually, the propellers were exchanged for modified three-blade propellers. The aircraft had a fixed undercarriage and a tiny tailwheel that gave the nose a peculiar 22-degree angle. It was extensively wind tunnel tested before flying. Testing. The aircraft prototype was tested for around 131 hours. The full-scale model provided the necessary evidence that Zimmerman's theories were broadly correct, since it could accomplish short takeoffs and landings and reach high speeds considering the limited power of its small engines. Unfortunately, it underperformed by being impossible to stall or to maneuver into a spin. Its maiden flight took place on November 23, 1942, with Vought Chief Test Pilot Boone Guyton commanding the aircraft. The first flight only lasted 13 minutes, but valuable data was obtained. Problems immediately arose due to the complex gearbox that transferred the engine power to the two long propeller shafts. Chief among the issues was the intense vibrations provoked during ground testing, which had already forced engineers to delay the first flight for months. Due to its unusual appearance, its subsequent test flight sparked reports of UFOs by Connecticut locals. Testing went on from 1942 to 43, with a total of 190 flights conducted mostly by Guyton and famed American aviator Charles Lindbergh. Lindbergh would later report that the aircraft was pleasantly easy to handle and was very capable at low speeds. Lindbergh had gained notoriety in 1927 by earning the Ortigue Prize for his non-stop flight from New York City to Paris, France in 33 and a half hours, piloting the single-engine monoplane Spirit of St. Louis. During one of these test flights, the pilot was forced to conduct an emergency landing at a Connecticut beach. As he approached the ground, he saw two civilians enjoying the day out directly in the path of the aircraft. To avoid crashing into them, the pilot locked the brakes on landing, which instead made the aircraft flip over to its back. Still, the airframe was so well assembled that it did not sustain any considerable damage, and the pilot was completely safe. The experimental aircraft flew for the last time on March 31, 1947, by then completing 131.8 hours of flight. XF-5U Although work on the initial flying pancake prototype was still being conducted, in January of 1942, the Bureau of Aeronautics requested from Vought a proposal for two prototypes of an even more experimental version of the V-173, labeled VS-135. The request was answered with the development version known as the Vought XF-5U-1, an enlarged flying pancake made of metal, five times the weight of the original. This updated version of the Flying Pancake would use two Pratt & Whitney R2000 radial engines with 1,600 horsepower each. The configuration, along with the metal body, was meant to maintain a low aspect ratio while still ensuring low takeoff and landing speeds with a high maximum speed. Usually, having a wing with such a low aspect ratio would cause poor performance. The degree of induced drag, generated at the wingtips, and the high air pressure below them would create plenty of energy that would in turn cause excessive drag. In more conventional planes, the vortices of the wingtips themselves generate drag. To counter the effect of the vortices, what is usually done is building a wing with a high aspect ratio, meaning a long and narrow one. Unfortunately, such an arrangement presents challenges in that making a structurally stiff long wing is almost impossible in that the aircraft loses maneuverability and reduces its roll rate. Therefore, Vought sought a different approach to dealing with the vortex issue. They used the propellers to cancel the drag-inducing tip vortices by rotating them in the opposite direction to the vortices. The idea was to retain the air with higher pressure below the wing. By eliminating the drag generated in that way, the plane could fly with a small wing area and the wing itself would have great structural strength while yielding high maneuverability. The propellers designed for the all-metal fighter were different from the torque-reducing counter-rotating propellers of the original wooden cloth of V-173. They were designed to include cyclic movement similar to the main rotor of a helicopter. This gave it a limited ability to shift the center of lift up and down, which assisted in maneuvering. In case of an emergency, the ejection seat allowed the pilot to leave the aircraft without being hindered by the propellers. While the prototype was unarmed, the final version was supposed to feature a combination of cannons and machine guns under the nose. Cancellation Unfortunately for Vought, their prototype was finalized just as the Navy was becoming increasingly interested in jet-propelled aircraft rather than propeller planes. Even though the XF-5U design seemed promising, with good maneuverability and high speeds of up to 550 miles per hour, 
the project found itself on the chopping block. The project had been substantially over budget and had surpassed the intended development time by 1946. The Navy ultimately canceled the Flying Pancake program on March 17, 1947. The original wooden canvas prototype was transferred out to a museum for display. The two new XF-5U1s had been mostly finished, and although one of them was used to conduct ground runs, it was exhibiting vibration problems. Their taxi trials evolved into trial hops, without the plane ever flying. The other XF-5U1, while considered finished, never received its final touches. The completed and tested plane's airframe was so strong that a wrecking ball was needed to demolish it. 